Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. I hope you have subscribed so that you can be up to date on the Arizona numbers. We keep uh, showing them to you here. And today we're going to take a look at what we can expect going into the holiday season. Besides pumpkin spice and Christmas trees, which we already see in Costco. It's the middle of September. The Halloween candy is already out in the grocery stores. I mean, you, you, you have almost 60 days to prepare for Halloween. But uh, what we're seeing is we're seeing some numbers that will let us make a prediction going forward. Now, that's barring any unforeseen events that happen out there, like a huge, enormous interest rate hike, which I don't see coming based on just the data, the numbers that we're seeing, and the, uh, how the bond market is reacting already. So it's going to take something really radical to make interest rates go much higher than the 6.2 that they've kind of bumped up against here recently. I don't see 7% by Christmas. I really don't. Um, I will be surprised if something like that happens. But we're seeing some flatlining going on. And in a rapidly declining market, these numbers wouldn't be leveling out. They'd either be going, certain graphs would be going straight up, others would be going straight down. And all across the board, we're not seeing that. We're seeing that new listings coming on continue to be fewer and fewer each week. And now even looking at the number of, uh, this is list price per square foot, the price is coming down, no doubt, because demand is so weak. But now we're seeing the past three weeks, it's kind of flatlined. Now, if we were in a rapidly declining market, you wouldn't expect to see this. You would see this start to turn down even steeper, but we're not seeing that yet. Here's price cuts by week. This is another number that should be going up, up, and up. And yet we've had two weeks here now, three weeks, where the price cuts have actually gone down. Now, that could mean that sellers are being more realistic in their price it, pricing. It could mean that the investors and the iBuyers have pretty much um, met the end of their road as far as uh, price cuts for now. They're not doing them as severe or as often. But again, if we were in a rapidly declining market, those numbers, they'd be going up. Here's our active listing count. Now see how we notice we kind of flatlined here? And these are active listings. So these are not new listings because new listings, the ones that are being added to the inventory, continue to be lower and lower every week. And I track them here on the seven day moving average. You can see they every day down, down, down. So that part's not coming up. But the active listings are increasing because buyers are, they've backed way off. We're between 2,400 and 2,700 on an average of every seven days. But again, this number has kind of, kind of flatlined with the exception of Labor Day weekend where active listings increased because sales over Labor Day weekend were so slow that the new listings that came on weren't absorbed. So I expect this number next week to just be nothing but a straight line over, if not slightly lower. We'll have to watch and see. Here's the real easy predictor. While I've just showed you new listings and active listings, look at new listings by month. Here's your pattern, folks. There's December. There's November. Year after year after year after year. You can expect fewer and fewer new listings to hit the market as we get towards the holidays. Now, the other thing that you can expect, too, is you can expect sales to also decrease. And that's going to be an interesting number to watch because how much lower can it really get going into the holidays than it already is? Now, Labor Day, over Labor Day weekend, seven-day moving average went from like 2,700 down to 2,300, which it's done that before. It did it over Fourth of July weekend. And then it springs right back up. But in July, it sprang up to a much higher number, somewhere around 35 to 3,800 units on a seven-day average. But now we're, we're just hitting this 2600 ceiling. So you really got to shake your head and say, how low is the month of November, December really going to be? And that's something to watch because that will add more downward pricing pressure if sales go even lower than they are right now. November, December, no doubt are going to be soft. And then we always jump out with the highest number of new listings in January and there's two months of the year that we do that, January and ironically, July for some reason. Uh, but January, we always get the highest number of new listings that come on. 
And then in February, we have the highest number of price reductions because everybody always goes in the first of the year all optimistic. Oh, I can, it's Christmas is over. I can list my house now. Here we go. And oh, I can't get that price. Well, we better lower it. And then here come the February price reductions. You're going to see more inventory in January for sure. There's no doubt in my mind just because it's seasonal. In fact, if we go back and look at that chart again, and we go back and look at this January, you'll see that the number is much higher than November, December. But then look at in the Phoenix area, March seems to be the peak time for new listings that are coming on, which kind of contradicts what I just told you about January. But January has more active listings, so it gets a little confusing. March has a lot of new listings, but the absorption rate is so much greater than January that the active listing count is smaller. Am I confusing you yet? So more active listings in January than we have in March, more new listings in March than we have in January. So that's what's coming. So as you go through the holiday weekend and you're thinking of listing your home, just be prepared that the buyer pool is very small. And it's going to continue to be very small because it is every year. But the glimmer of hope and the good news, if you're trying to sell for the holiday season, one, you're going to have far less foot traffic through your house. And the people out there looking are the serious ones. If they're out looking in November and December, it's probably because of a job relocation in January and they have to buy. So the people that are coming to look at your house during the holidays, although it's a pain in the rump, are serious buyers. So when you see low numbers, that doesn't necessarily mean that you should avoid listing them because when you list in January, you'll have more competition. Now, I know this firsthand. I listed a home once. In, uh, it was in Fountain Hills. We listed it on Christmas Eve and we had a contract on New Year's Eve. And the buyers that came in were not looky-loos. The buyers coming in were serious buyers. And these people were down from San Francisco, liked the house, wrote us a good offer, and away we go. So that's what you have to look forward to going into the holiday season. I hope that helps. Don't forget to subscribe. Take care.